Hi everyone, Mike here from Bikes by Mike with another cycling related video. Today I'm going to show you how to swap out a Shimano Dura Ace crankset with a rotor Aldual R24 crankset installed with a Power to Max NG Eco Spider power meter. Bleh, that's a mouthful. Okay, let's get to it. Before I show you how to do this, let me explain my situation and why I chose this as the best option to add power reading capability to my bike. I recently bought a 2002 Candale Super 6 EVO equipped with the all new Shimano Dura Ace DI2 12 speed drivetrain. This is the Dura Ace 9200 model minus the power meter. The bike has everything I want except that it's messing a power meter. So I went about looking at the different power meter options available to me to figure out which one I should use. Basically when shopping for a power meter, there are three different categories of power meters to choose from. Pedal based, crank arm power meters, and finally spider or crank based power meters. While going with a pedal power meter would make for the easiest installation, I didn't go this route as I just recently upgraded to the new hyper posh and expensive Wahoo Speedplay nano pedals and did not want to replace them. Going with a single crank arm power meter on the non-drive side would have been the least expensive option, but I didn't like the idea of only tracking power output on one side. I wanted dual-sided power readings and to buy both left-sided and right-sided crank arm power meters gets quite expensive. So I was directed towards spider-based power meters based on my existing equipment setup and what I wanted out of my power meter. Now that I landed on a crank-based spider powder meter, I had to look at options compatible with the Shimano crank setup the bike came stocked with. That's the tricky part. Unless you go with a Shimano power meter, but no, you don't want to do that, really. Look online, the reviews are not that great. There's no option available that allows you to simply connect a power meter spider to your existing Shimano Durace crank. You need to look at either buying a crank with power meter built into it or buying a power meter spider and pairing it with a compatible crank. I looked at all the crank based options on the market, which includes those offered by Stages, 4i, Rotor, and Quarks, just to name a few. But after looking at all these brands, I decided to go with the Power to Max NG Eco, which is actually what I've been using on my System 6 road bike for the past three years. It was an easy choice for me. The reason I went with this option was for three reasons. First, it's the power meter I was most familiar with. Second, power to max power meters get exceptionally good customer ratings. Look anywhere on the web and you'll be hard pressed to find any customer with a bad thing to say about the company or their products. I used the NG Eco for three years and the power meter worked flawlessly. Like I never once had a power reading drop. The only maintenance I had to do was to change the coin battery every six months or so. The third and last reason I went with the NG Eco is that the power meter paired with the rotor outdoor cranks cost me $1,190 Canadian all in, which makes them competitive with similar spec crank based power meters. I went with the combo package that has the power to max NG Eco power meter paired with the rotor outdoor R24 millimeter cranks. Since Shimano Durace cranks are fitted with 24 millimeter axles, this allows me to swap out the Durace crank with rotor crank using the existing Shimano bottom bracket. I could also reuse the Durace chain rings on the rotor cranks if I want. The NG Eco has a claimed power measurement accuracy of plus or minus 2%, which is more than what I need and as good, if not better, than similarly priced power meters. Their NG model is a bit lighter and it's accurate to within plus or minus 1%. Now I could take the chain rings off the Durace cranks that came with the bike and use them on the rotor cranks, but I'm choosing instead to install new rotor chain rings specced with the four bolt 110 BCD or bolt circle diameter standard that Shimano uses. This way I can sell my complete Durace crank set with existing chain rings. Plus the rotor cranks and chain rings are as good as Shimano in my opinion. There are three steps in swapping out a Shimano crank set with a rotor crank set equipped with a power to max power meter. I'll show you how to perform each of these steps in detail and then summarize the whole process at the end. Step one is to remove the existing Shimano Dury's crank set from the bike. 
Step two is to install your Shimano Durace chain rings, or in my case, my rotor chain rings, onto the rotor cranks. And the last step number three is to install the rotor crank set onto your bike. So step number one is to remove the Shimano crank from your bike. And for that, we'll need a few tools. We'll need a five millimeter hex key. We'll need the Shimano preload adjuster. If you're moving the chain rings from your crank, you'll need a T30 torque key. A little pick or flathead screwdriver can be handy to um, basically to uh, lift up the plate that holds the crank arm fixing bolts together and possibly a rubber mallet if crank is difficult to get out of the bottom bracket. So the first step is to loosen the crank arm fixing bolts which are right here. There's one on this side and one on the opposite side. So that's where the five millimeter hex key comes in. So counterclockwise. You don't want to totally loosen these because they're double threaded. So you don't want to totally remove them from the crank arm. Just loosen them like that. Then you're going to take your Shimano crank arm preload adjustment tool. And this is just going to be finger tight. So you want to back this off, fully remove that end cap by turning it counterclockwise. And next you're going to want to take your pick or the flathead screwdriver and lift up that little plate. Just like that, which is holding the um, kind of a, I guess, a locking mechanism to prevent the uh, crank arm from accidentally coming out. And once you have that, you should be able to just remove the crank arm. Yeah, there we go. Just like that. So you have your non drive side crank arm removed. And now you can, either with your hands or with the rubber mallet, you can knock the uh, axle out of the um, drive side. So of course you're going to want to remove the chain off the remove the chain off the uh, crank first, off the chain rings. Let's do that carefully. And actually, this is. It's a new bike, so it's coming out very easily. And there you have it. You have the Shimano crank removed from the bike. So step two is to install the chain rings onto the rotor Alduo crank arm. And basically the tools you need for the job is a T30 hex, a six millimeter Allen key, and a torque wrench to be able to tighten the chain ring bolts to between 12 and 14 newton meters of force. So the first thing we want to, want to do is to, um, in this case, the axle came with a couple of washers, uh, wave washers that I've already taken off, but it has an O-ring at each end. So I'm going to take the one on the non-drive side off and set that aside. There should be one on the drive side and you want to keep that there. If the Shimano crank had additional O-rings or wave washers, you want to replace those. But in my case, the Shimano Dura Ace only had an O-ring on the drive side. Actually had two, but they were narrower. So two on the drive side and one on the non-drive side. So that's what I'm going to replicate when I install the Aldul onto the bike. So the first thing you're going to want to do is take the large chain ring and note where the notch is. This will be aligned with the crank arm. So you want to slip this, the outer chain ring on the outside 
or outward facing part of the um, power meter, just like that. And you can see from this side, we'll see from this side, the notch, which is hidden by the crank arm. So when you have that positioned, then you take your inner chain ring with the lettering, the words facing inboard or towards the frame. And you'll notice that there'll be a little notch right there. You can see on the inner chain ring and this as well needs to be positioned in line with the crank arm. So just like that. Now you're going to take your chain ring bolts and with the plain one on the inside, you're going to install these onto your chain ring. If your chain ring bolts don't have Loctite, I would suggest using Loctite on it. And now you want to make sure the chain ring bolts are tightened to between 12 and 14 newton meters of force. So I will put the T30 on one side and I'll take my six millimeter torque wrench and make sure it's tightened. And that's it. So now we have the chain ring, both chain rings inner and outer attached to the a dual crank arm. Okay, now that we got the chain rings on the a dual crank, step number three is the final step, which is putting the crank onto the bike. So for the tools for the job, you're going to need just a little bit of grease, all-purpose bicycle grease for the inside of the bearings. You're going to need a torque wrench that you can set to 40 newton meters of force to tighten down the crank arm. Don't forget the uh, O-ring that goes on the, um, we already have the drive side O-ring on the axle. This is for the non-drive side. We have a 2.5 millimeter hex key, a 10 millimeter hex key. We have our cranks. Um, we have our rotor, uh, a dual crank on the drive side, and we have the non-drive side crank. So for your non-drive side crank arm, you want to loosen the preload nut with your two millimeter hex key. And then you want to rotate this so it's as far into the crank arm. Oh, wrong way. There we go. Like that. Don't over tighten it because it can bind up. And then once it's installed, we're going to make up the slack between the preload and the um, inside of the axle. Next we're going to grease the bearings of the bottom bracket. On both sides. Now we're going to install the crank onto the bike. Don't forget to install your O-ring. You left it on the drive side, but install it on the non-drive side. Install the non-drive side crank arm, obviously making sure it's in the right direction relative to the one on the other side. I'm going to start it with my 10 millimeter Allen key and then I'll use a torque wrench after to make sure it's at the right tension. Now I'll use a torque wrench.
40 newton meters of force. I had loosened the preload adjuster. Now I want to turn the preload adjuster so it's touching the inside of the bearing seal. So I'm turning it so it goes inboard. You just want it to remove any play in the system. So you don't want it super tight, but you just want to make sure there's no play in your axle arms. Then you tighten down the two millimeter Allen key, just with two fingers. You don't want it super tight, just two finger tightness. And that's it. You have your new cranks with your power meter installed on your bike. That's all I got for today, folks. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe as it allows me to produce more content for all of you. See you next time. Happy rolling.